Hi everyone, my name is John O'Bacon and I want to give a quick presentation that I originally delivered at the Ubuntu Developer Summit in California in May 2012. Now even though this presentation is called Accomplishing an Awesome App Developer Platform, this really isn't a presentation about the story of how that platform was built. Uh, there's been many people over the last few years who have contributed to building an extensive app developer platform in Ubuntu to empower app developers to, to deliver their content really easily. But this is instead a story of one personal experience of someone who was empowered by that platform. And that person is me. <clears throat> now, before I get started, I want to set expectations fairly clearly. I'm really not that good of a programmer. Um, I've been a hobbyist programmer for, for a number of years. Um, I'm not a professional. I don't write code during the day. I write code in the evenings. Uh, and the reason why I write code is not because I particularly enjoy writing code. It's because I have interesting ideas uh, of things that I think will be cool to see in software, whether it's uh, multi-track recording software or things to sync devices or whatever it might be. Uh, now, this story started about about six months, six or eight months ago, uh, when I was at a community management roundtable um, in uh, at eBay's offices in Silicon Valley. And uh, a friend of mine who works at Google asked me a fairly straightforward question. He said, how do you acknowledge contributions in the Ubuntu community? And at the time, I realized that we didn't really have a good answer to this. Uh, our primary answer was simply goodwill. Um, when someone contributes to the many different areas in which they can participate in Ubuntu, um, we would acknowledge those contributions through goodwill. We'd thank them, we'd say, appreciate it, thank you for taking the time to do this. And we'd do this either one-on-one -on -one or in blog posts or in release notes or whatever it might be. So I started kicking around some ideas about how we could do this in a more formal and structured way. Uh, and then started having some ideas around some kind of trophy system where you could browse things in the community that you could do um, and maybe get uh, little trophies that acknowledge those contributions. Uh, a few months later, this guy on the left came to stay at my place. Um, and um, uh, we did what we've done many times before. He's been my best buddy for about 14 years now. And we've had plenty of harebrained schemes together. And um, we sat down and I... I taught him about this idea of some kind of some kind of uh, acknowledgement of contribution system, um, and uh, and we started fleshing out some ideas. And this is what would have eventually become the Ubuntu accomplishment system. So we spent probably about four and a half hours one night sat there drinking countless cups of tea and fleshing out a plan that I then documented into a specification, and I created a bunch of mockups. So let me show you these mockups. This is what I created uh, back then as just brainstorming. So this is how it would work. Um, you have a window that basically summarizes lots of different things that you can do in Ubuntu, uh, whether it's writing a unit test or submitting a hardware test report or filing your first bug or whatever it might be. This is a way in which you can browse different things that you can do in the community. Now when you click on one of these things, you could then see documentation and guidance about how to do it. So this will be um, a description of that particular accomplishment, um, where you can find help, uh, what's involved in achieving it, that kind of stuff. This is a really, really discoverable means in which you can find out things that you can do uh, in the community. Um, now, the idea was that somehow in the background um, there'd be a, a system that would be uh, that would be running that would detect when you've done these things, when you've when you've achieved, achieved these things, uh, and it would display little notification bubbles that would pop up to say, "Oh, you've accomplished something new." And when you accomplish something new, um, you'd have a view in this software that would be basically almost like a trophy cabinet, and it would show you the different types of things that you've accomplished. Now, what was really important in this system uh, is that it's integrated neatly into the desktop. It should feel native. It shouldn't feel like a bolted-on thing. Um, so the idea here as well was that we'd have a, uh, a lens in the dash in Unity in Ubuntu um, that would show the different things that you've achieved and additional things that you can achieve so it feels tightly integrated into Ubuntu. Now there was a reason why we call this the Ubuntu accomplishment system and not some kind of achievement system is that the idea is that these should be real things that you accomplish. They're not 500 posts to a forum or a thousand posts to a bug report. Um, those things can be easily gamed. Um, so we started talking about how you'd the kind of policy around what makes a good accomplishment that can't be gamed. That, that led our thinking on towards some general um, um, elements of ethos that we thought would be important in building a great system. Um, so first of all, uh, one ethos is that we, we, we should be able to present to the user not only things in the community that you can do, such as filing a bug or 
um, uh, contributing a branch or whatever it might be. Uh, but also things that you can do on your computer, things such as sending my first email in Thunderbird or installing a package from the Ubuntu Software Center um, or maybe visiting a website for the first time in Firefox. So uh, this, that if we had the system, if we had a system on your computer that could do that, this would be a really great way of discovering things that you can do on your computer as well. Secondly, it should be decentralized. We don't have the resources or honestly the right to build a single Skynet that knows everything about everybody uh, and awards uh, trophies when necessary. Um, so we'd need to build this in a way in which we can have lots of different clients that detect things and then maybe verify them somehow. Uh, the third element was supporting multiple clients. Uh, while we wanted to build a lens for Ubuntu, uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't uh, allow people to build um, a KDE client or um, a client on the web or a client on your phone. Um, so we wanted to separate kind of the back end and the front end. Uh, but we did want to make sure that we build tight Ubuntu integration out of the box. It should integrate with the launcher and it should integrate with Notify OSD and use um, the, the the, the color scheme in Ubuntu and that kind of stuff. But finally, even though we wanted tight Ubuntu integration, we wanted this to be useful for other projects as well, uh, not just Ubuntu. We want to make sure that if you want to, uh, if you want to have different accomplishments for an upstream project such as Thunderbird or Mozilla or GNOME or KDE or whatever it might be, uh, uh, whatever it might be, those can be integrated into the system as well. So those those were the kind of goals that we set out with. Um, so. I fleshed this out into into a flow chart that kind of looks like this, um, a, a structure of how logically this would work. And let me explain how this works. So at the bottom, you can see we have these clients. So you could have uh, the helper application, which was the little GUI app that I showed you in the mockups earlier on, um, or you could have the lens. And this these these clients can talk via uh, a convenience Python module to a daemon. And the daemon is the back-end service that basically detects when you've accomplished things. So what would happen is the daemon would know um, a set of accomplishments, uh, such as uh, ones in the community. Um, and what it would do is it would detect when you've accomplished something, such, I've, such as I've filed my first bug. Um, but we don't want people to be able to fake those accomplishments. So what we could then do is uh, when it detects that you've accomplished something, such as filing my first bug, it will then synchronize it to a verification server. And that verification server will double check that you did actually achieve that thing. Um, if it detects that you did, then it will GPG sign it and then sync it back to your computer. And then it can be displayed in either the helper or the lens uh, client applications. Now, importantly, on the right hand side, you can see another client, which is an application. So this is for the um, accomplishments on your computer. Um, we also want a, an application to be able to say to the system, uh, for example, you've passed level one in a particular game, so you should award a trophy to the user. So we present a DBus API in which people can do that as well. So we, we you know, throughout this four and a half hour planning session uh, and through 15 cups of PG tips and I don't know how many cigarettes on his side, um, on, on Stuart's side, we ended up with, with this fairly comprehensive plan. Uh, he, uh, Stuart told me pretty up front that he wasn't going to have a lot of time to work on this, so it was basically in my hands. Um, but I just want to remind you of an important point. I'm really not that good of a programmer. Um, so this looks incredibly complicated. Um, so I started at the, ver at the very beginning, and I started thinking about how we define what an accomplishment is. And we talked a little bit, a bit about this originally, um, and this is basically how an accomplishment works. You don't need to read all the text on this slide. Um, this is just to give you an idea of how it works. An accomplishment is broken into two pieces. Uh, you've got essentially metadata about the accomplishment, which is just a config parser any file. Uh, and this just has documentation about how you achieve it, some tips and tricks, uh, pitfalls, links to useful, uh, useful documentation, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, that's really easy to put together. And then on the right hand side, you've got the script. This is basically a piece of code that detects whether you've actually accomplished the thing that you've accomplished. Uh, so, for example, you could have um, you could have a a script that was that would detect if you're a member of a particular team in Launchpad. So that was fairly easy, deciding on that, and I d documented that. Uh, but that was basically deciding how something is structured. This isn't necessarily writing a huge amount of code. In terms of writing code, I started where I know where, where I know best essentially which is writing the GUI application. I've written some applications in the past so I figured it'd be fairly straightforward to to, to, 
to start writing this one. Um, so I started with a client and writing um, a graphical application. And fortunately in Ubuntu, we, we have this tool called Quickly. Quickly is a really fantastic means in which you can get a GUI application up and running right away. So I just type in Quickly Create Ubuntu Application and then the name of it, um, and it shows a, a graphical window. It lets me um, edit my code really easily, edit the UI. Uh, it lets me package the software if I want to so other people can test it. It's dead simple. So I had, I, I had like a, a skeleton of my application up and running right away. Now, I'm, I'm, I was writing this in Python, um, and one of the things I love about Python is that it's batteries included. So you, you have this rich archive of different functionality that you can enable in your application. This is not only useful for me as a developer who wants to be able to easily access this content so I can build it into my application, but it's also great because I know that all of my users are going to have access to that as well. So when I release a package, it can depend on this functionality in the Ubuntu Software Center. So the Ubuntu Software Center is a really, is a really critical means of delivering applications because it provides an incredibly rich platform, uh, not only for development, but for develop, uh, but for delivering this to my users as well. But it was not the Ubuntu Software Center is not only useful in terms of in terms of what Python needs um, or any other language for that matter, but also in terms of how I build software. So, for example, a friend of mine recommended um, that I check out this editor called Genie. Um, and in the Ubuntu Software Center, there's ratings and reviews that I could browse, and it was one click away for me to install. So the Software Center provides a nice means in which I can browse different tools uh, and facilities that I can use to make my development uh, uh, more effective. Um, these tools, uh, and bearing in mind that I'm not a good programmer, help me to take my mock-up and turn it into something that I could use. Now, admittedly, this little trophy info app is kind of ugly and doesn't have the nice icons and all the rest of it. But this was basically about three or four days work. Okay. Um, so after building this comprehensive plan after our all night planning session, I could actually build something that I could use and play with. Now I did what many people do um, when they write software and particularly when they write open source software is I wanted to share the code somewhere so other people could see it. So one of the things that I think some people forget about Ubuntu is that we have this incredibly uh, comprehensive development environment um, online called Launchpad. And Launchpad allows me to put my code on there, to share it with other people, for people to contribute code back, to support translations and report bugs and all these kinds of things. And Launchpad is a really slick site for doing this. So I created... Um, I created a, a branch and put it on Launchpad in my junk folder because I was thinking, we'll see how long I can get on. Maybe after a week, I'll, I'll figure that this is too hard and, and, and move on to something else. Um, so I put it up there and people started looking into it and it was pretty pretty cool. So I then started looking into the, into the next area and this is where I started getting nervous because I've never written a daemon before. I've never written a backend before. It sounds horrendously complicated. Um, uh, I'm aware of what Dbus is. I've never written, I've never provided a Dbus service. Dbus is a means in which applications on a system can share, can communicate to each other. Um, but this looked pretty complex to me. Um, so I started building some of this, and it was quite closely um, integrated near to my uh, to my graphical application that I just showed you. But it got to a point where I needed to really take this basic kind of backend that I built and really make it a proper daemon that can be started and stopped. Uh, correctly, that can store its process ID, that can log uh, effectively, the kind of thing that I could deliver to, to people in, in a real world situation. And, uh, and this is when Stuart said to me, well, you need to use Twisted, which is this incredibly powerful asynchronous um, library for, for building essentially services. Um, now, I was aware of Twisted. In fact, I know a few people who work on Twisted. Um, and as Stuart so rightly put it, um, Twisted is complete and utter witchcraft. It's magic how this works. Um, and it just seemed incredibly complicated to me as well. But I looked into it. Um, and what I did is I posted to the community. I posted to the Ubuntu community and said, uh, I'm building an application. I'm using Twisted. I don't really know how to get started in terms of turning it into a daemon. Can anybody help? And I had a bunch of people um, get back to me. Uh, and I don't think that this is because I'm the Ubuntu community manager. I think the reason why people responded to my call for help is because people in the Ubuntu community are just really nice people and they wanted to help. So uh, various people con contacted me and, and sent me some uh, links to some documentation and some, some example code. And before long, we now had a backend that was working with, uh, with Twisted. So now I had the, a complicated piece completed. I had a graphical application that was 
uh, that looked a little ugly, but it was nonetheless, it was working. Um, and the reason why it looked ugly was not because of the platform, it was because I just hadn't got to making it look pretty yet. Um, so I then moved on to the next piece, uh, and this is where I started getting really nervous, the verification server. So as you may remember from earlier on, uh, what I wanted to do was to be able to uh, detect if you've accomplished something. If you have, it then syncs the trophy file to a verification server that will that will independently check if you've accomplished this. And then if you have accomplished it, it will GPG sign the, sign the file and then sync it back to your computer, which will then be displayed in the client. So this requires lots of moving parts. First of all, I need to be able to synchronize to a server. And that involves all kinds of things, such as what happens if the server crashes? How do we deal with logging? How do we deal with, how do we deal with security? Um, how do we uh, not have any kind of synchronization conflicts? All of that kind of stuff. Um, setting up a server was easy because we've got a Ubuntu server. I had that up and running in 20 minutes. Um, but the synchronization was what made me nervous. So Stuart recommended I use Ubuntu One, and this was the best decision we could have made. Um, um, many of you will know of Ubuntu One as, as this pretty cool platform in which you can synchronize your files easily and effectively and various other things. Um, but Ubuntu One actually exposes a really nice API that you can build into your application. So, um, you know, I originally put together my graphical application in about four or five days. I had the backend support uh, up and running in probably another four or five days, maybe a week. Um, um, so building the Ubuntu One component, it took me about a day, uh, less than a day, to have Ubuntu One fully working inside of the application. It's incredibly powerful and it deals with all that complexity of synchronizing files and locking and what happens when it crashes, all that kind of stuff. It's all taken care for you. Um, so now I had, um, and now I was in a position where I um, I could detect if something, if I'd accomplished something via the back end, it would synchronize it, synchronize it to the validation server, it would sign it and it would synchronize it back and it would appear in a notifi notification bubble and it worked. I actually had my vision, or our vision rather, worked. Um, and, uh, and that was fantastic. So what I did was I uh, then divided this up into the different branches, into real projects, and put it on Launchpad, uh, and put it up there. And this is where our community started getting interested. Um, people started translating it. We had uh, the viewer and the demon were translated within uh, within an hour into something like uh, 10 or 12 languages. Uh, it provided a means in people who couldn't program or weren't interested in programming could contribute actively to the project, as well as some programmers getting involved as well. So, um, so uh, basically, a little over uh, a little over a couple of months later, we had a system that started looking like this. Uh, you can browse a variety of different accomplishments in this graphical application. It's now looking attractive. It's using the Ubuntu color scheme. All of the all the design thinking has effectively been done for me already, uh, which is wonderful. Um, you can click on one of these different accomplishments, and you can find out information about it. So you can. You can click in there and, and you can read about how, in this case, how Bizarre Branch is merged, where to find in information about the opportunity, how to find help. Uh, it lists the steps that you need to go through to achieve that thing. In the background, the backend daemon um, is quietly detecting whether you've accomplished these different things. Uh, and if you do, it, posts a little, it pops up a little notification bubble that rather nicely tells you that you've achieved something. Um, and then, of course, we talked about the integration into the desktop. And David Kaye uh, very generously put together an, a, a, a Unity lens. He said it took him about an hour to build this. Um, and this is just a client. It just talks to the back-end daemon. Um, and, it, and it shows you the different trophies and the different opportunities that are available. Um, so recapping, we started out this vision um, um, and we put together this fairly comprehensive plan of a front end and a back end and a, a you know a, a verification service, all of these complexities. Um, and a little over four months after originally uh, starting on this, uh, we were able to put out Ubuntu Accomplishments 0 0.1. Now I just want to reiterate a few of the things here. I'm not a good programmer. Um, this was very much something that I did in my spare time as a hobby. Um, it was me bumbling my way through through some of these code paths, trying to figure out how it works. Um, if I can build something like this, I think anybody can build something like this. Anybody who's a competent programmer can definitely build something about this. Um, I was able to go from uh, a set of mockups to building 
um, to building um, a graphical application, a back-end service, a verification service, and packaging everything up and delivering it to our users through a personal package archive um, in just over four months. And none of this would have been possible if it wasn't for the Ubuntu platform. Um, so I hope that this uh, little story is inspiring enough to encourage you folks to get started in writing your own application and delivering on Ubuntu as well. And if you want to get started, just go to developer.ubuntu.com and you can find out all the details. Thank you.